much for joining us for online church today happy new year to you all i trust that you've had a, a wonderful christmas holiday and now we're back into the swing of the new year i'd like to welcome all our friends and all our family from uh, africa from the philippines and everybody here in wa has been such a challenging year for a lot of people and as we move on to the next year I just started to reflect on what that's gonna look like for myself for many years I used to do New Year's resolutions but then I decided that that was probably not the best thing for me because I would have all these plans and within weeks I had forgotten I'd lost focus and I'm sure a lot of you can relate then I started doing something different where I would have one word to focus on. So I remember one year my word was simplify and then the next year my word was servanthood and then it was leadership. And even though that was really good and it helped me focus, I wanted to step it up a bit and I thought, you know, I really need to seek God for direction in terms of what my year looks like. 
And so when we go to the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 to 10, we see the beginnings of God transitioning the children of Israel from slavery to freedom. And so I just wanted to share a bit about that and the lessons that I got from that. So it says, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hephites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me and I've seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites out of Egypt. I really learned a few things from reading that scripture and I just wanted to share that. So first of all, understand that the purposes and plans of God for his children are driven by love. And so he responds to the suffering that he sees. So in terms of the plans that God has for us and the things that he wants us to do moving forward, it's always driven from his desire to show love to his children. The second thing I got was don't over spiritualize his presence. It was while Moses was tending sheep that God appeared to him. He was taking care of his father-in-law's sheep. He wasn't doing the family business really. So for you, it could be anything. It could be you're at school, if you're a student, you're at work at your desk, you're cooking, you're taking care of the baby, right? It's in the everyday that God appears to us. The next thing that I got was, don't box God in. God appeared to Moses through a burning bush and Moses was drawn to that. And it was when Moses was drawn to that, God started to speak to him and call out to him. And I just thought about the fact that, you know, sometimes we have our own ideas based on our own experiences about what God's going to look like or how he's going to appear to us. I remember a time where I was at a function, a party, and it was very noisy. I wasn't enjoying myself. I was just sitting there. I didn't know a lot of people. And I felt God start to speak to me about someone in that crowd. And I thought, wow, God is amazing. I wasn't expecting that, but I knew it was God because I've come to learn the voice of God. And it was just really interesting because I would expect normally that God would speak to me when I'm in church, in the middle of worship, raising my hands, but this is quite a unique experience. So don't box in. God understand that he can appear to you in so many different ways. So expect God in the unusual. The next thing I got was this idea of take off your security blanket. You know, it says that God told Moses to take off his shoes. He said, take off your shoes because the land, the land that you're standing on is holy ground. And so God was essentially saying, this is a different space right? All along Moses had been tending the sheep and he had been walking in these shoes, but God was like, things are about to sh change. There's about to be a shift. And for what I'm about to show you, I need you to recognize that shift. And so he had to take off his shoes that he had worn all the time to recognize that this was a different moment. Sometimes when we come to God, we come with our securities. We come with the things that have helped us feel secure. But in order to step into that next thing with God, we have to let go of those things. We have to take off those things that have always made us feel secure. So that's one thing that stood out for me. The last thing was that the plan of God includes you and I. You see, God saw the suffering of the children of Israel and he says, I have come down because I have seen the suffering. But then he says, so now go. And I found it really interesting. I was like, okay, God, you're saying I have seen the suffering. I've come down. Now you go. So basically God is saying that his plan involves us. We are the hands and feet of Jesus here on earth. So now go. And I believe as we move on to this next year, that's how we've got to do our new way of thinking, our planning, our goals, our vision. We have to expect that God is going to say, now you go.
right? I have seen the suffering of my children, now you go. So there's a level of expectancy that we should have as we move on to the next year. And then the goals and the plans that we have are in the context of what God wants to do to alleviate the suffering of the children. So I hope that made sense to you. I hope that was encouraging because it was definitely encouraging to me. I just wanted to say, you know, for some of us, we are in a place of slavery. We are caught up in our own stuff. We have things that we are stuck in and we don't know how to get out of them. And I just wanted to say that, you know, I would put it out there to say there is someone, there is a God, there is a Jesus Christ who can set you free from that place of slavery. We know that God has always sent messengers to set his children free. He did it with Moses. He used Moses to set the children of Israel free from Egypt to Israel. And so he wants to do the same thing with us, that we all have our Egypt, that place where the place of our past or the place of our slavery. And he wants us to take us to a place where the, the, the land of milk and honey, the land where we are free, where we're able to walk in our calling, where we're able to use our gifts and talents with full dependence on him. So if you've never made that decision to give your life to Christ so that he can take over and move you from that place of slavery to a place of freedom, this is your moment. So I'd like you to repeat after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe that you are the son of God and I believe that you died so that I could be set free. And with that, you are now a child of God and you are set free. We've now come to the time of our tithes and offerings, and I'd like to bring you some encouragement. Matthew 6, verse 31 and 33 says, Do not worry what you will eat, wear, or drink. And then verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And you know, one of the key things is that, you know, I recall a time when we didn't have, I was living with my maternal grandmother, and we didn't have much, especially during the Christmas period. And we thought normally everybody would have chicken and rice. And this is back in the days when chicken and rice was a, was a big deal, you know, and we didn't have anything. And on Christmas morning, my father just miraculously came to the house carrying some uh, bags full of groceries, you know. And I think that a cure to the anxiety we may feel around you know, our, our finances and our money and the things that we need in our life is to give it all to God and to trust Him that He knows that we need these things and if we trust in Him, He will provide for us. And so our main goal, especially coming into this new year, is to ensure that we put all our trust in Him and to seek Him first and the things that we need, He'll give to us. Thank you. Be encouraged. Thank you very much for joining us on Online Church today. I hope you enjoyed the service. If you'd like prayer or would like to get in touch with us, please contact us on the number that's provided. And also, if you'd like to check out what's happening in the life of our church, please check out our social media. Take care. Thank you.